Hello everyone. So this is our first uh, lecture during the uh, MCO pandemic COVID-19. So in this video, I'm going to uh, give you a lecture on uh, state management and uh, we uh, however uh, in this uh, video I will uh, highlight only one method of state management which is by using uh, a stateful widgets so this is this these are the the outline of this uh, lecture first of all uh, we are going to look at uh, what stat is all about and what is uh, stat management after that we are going to look at uh, why actually we need stat management why do we need to manage states and then uh, we also uh, uh, will uh, look at uh, several approaches uh, for state management, how to manage states, and then uh, after that, uh, we are going to focus more on uh, one of the approach, which is by using stateful widgets. Okay, the stateful widgets, which is uh, the main purpose of this uh, lecture video. Um, uh, in fact, this. Uh, session uh, uh, will be divided into two uh, parts the first one is about uh, the lecture okay as I mentioned just now the topics uh, starting from what is state and then uh, in the next part uh, I will be giving you a demo on how to use stateful widgets for uh, uh, doing a basic stat, uh, stat management. Okay, so let's get started. So what are stats? So basically states are everything that exists in memory when the application is running. So in other words, basically state is a sort of data, just data uh, that uh, how that uh, uh, that are held by the application okay, when uh, it is running. So example of states or data uh, like the the assets of the application, the images, phone, and so on. Uh, and then all the variables of course because everything is stored in variables uh, the animation state animations also has the onset like whether the animation is is running or is doing something uh, like if you are doing animation of rotation so how many de degree of the rotation and uh, uh, the texture uh, also can be stat for the for an application and um, uh, many more. Okay, so uh, in general, uh, a stat is basically data of the application. Uh, in Flutter, okay, uh, uh, we can. Uh, look at a state into uh, two categories there are states that uh, stored locally or uh, here locals means you are storing uh, the states in a particular widget that means the state on only focus on that particular widget and there are app what uh, app application wide uh, state uh, this example of state is basically uh, the state that uh, 
uh, use uh, throughout the application okay so uh, an example like uh, maybe the the team uh, the team of the application uh, whereby if you want to uh, uh, make sure your uh, team consistent normally you only have one uh, state okay one data and then you uh, you allow all the comp ui components uh, in your application to to share the state okay next why uh, state management what is the big deal regarding this managing states okay. so when we develop application normally we are developing uh, uh of course the application itself <laughs> uh and then uh from the user perspective the application is basically the user interface right so uh, since we provide interface to the user the user can interact with the system or the application this uh, will uh, make the application itself to uh, change okay over time okay um, uh, to give you an example like uh, let's say in flutter counter application okay uh, I hope you can recall what is a flutter counter application when you uh, taps on the button plus okay what happened uh, there is something happened behind the scene okay uh, that one is uh, the state if we don't manage the state properly the the data of the application cannot be reflected on the use uh, user interface presentation okay uh, because state management is is, is all about uh, to uh, to synchronize your your application data your application state with the user interface so uh, coming back to the question why 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 do we need uh, state management okay because application states application itself uh, change over time okay uh, so there are some some uh, reasons why yeah, yeah as i mentioned just now is because it involves user interaction okay from the user interaction it will affect the the state of the application okay so uh, as i gave an example just now regarding the flutter counter when the uh, initially the current state of the application let's say initially is zero the counter is zero then when the user taps on plus and then behind the scene uh, the state of the counter is one so in order uh, uh, to realize what is going on behind the scene uh, to user interface presentation we need to manage this uh state okay that means we we, we need to uh, to show the number accordingly if the current if in the memory the counter is one then you 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 need to update the presentation on the screen to one okay uh state can also uh change because of not because from the user but because of from um, 
uh, interaction with other resources okay, other uh, uh, the uh, an example is by interacting with, with the back end okay like in firebase when you request something and then when the firebase or any api service give you the data uh, this data actually will change the state of the application so you need to realize on the screen okay so uh, these two are the the, the most common uh, cases that affect uh, the state of uh, an application okay so as i mentioned just now uh, the whole story about step management is about how to make sure the application user interface reflects the state of the application okay so as i uh, gave an example flutter counter when the user taps on the button count plus uh, behind the scene the counter increases by one okay that what happened behind the scene so we we need to show the result on the screen okay uh, that's why uh, we, we, we 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 do this by uh, manage the state properly okay so I already gave you this uh, uh flutter counter application whereby when the user when the user is uh pressing this button when the user is pressing this button okay what happened uh behind the scene our application actually in increases the variable that hold the counter by one okay and then uh, we manage this uh, this uh, state change and then we reflect the result here okay that's why uh, it's very important to have a state uh, state management if we don't have uh, state management what happened for this kind of application the user keep pressing uh, the user keeps pressing this button and uh, he or she doesn't see any changes on the screen but what happened behind the scene the number increases but the user doesn't see that because we didn't synchronize the uh, the memory the value of counter memory and the, the counter on the screen so that's why we need uh, to manage the state uh, properly. Okay. Uh, now the question: uh, How to manage uh, the state? So in general, there are two main approaches to uh, to manage. Uh, the states okay this is from the perspective actually this one is coming from the programming paradigm uh, whereby we have imperative and declarative okay so uh, uh, doing state management also has have us uh, has these two approaches main main approaches uh, uh, the first one is by imperatively okay by imperative approach the second one is declarative so let's take a look what is an imperative uh, step management and what is uh, a declarative step management okay uh, an imperative step management this is basically the 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 approach uh, I believe most of you are uh, very familiar with uh, with it okay uh, whether you notice it or not but this is what you learn so far from uh, pt1 pt2 web programming uh, in, in java 
okay object oriented programming okay so this is the approach or programming paradigm that uh, uh, we are familiar with okay basically uh, in this approach uh, the focus is is on uh, how to achieve things okay it is focused on how okay. and when we talk about step management uh, for uh, user interface okay it is the same uh, but before I elaborate more on that uh, so uh, these are uh, some examples of uh, we can say that programming or a technology that adopt uh, this strategy or this approach imperative approach okay uh, Windows programming. Uh, I uh, I'm not sure with, uh, whether you are familiar with this. Basically, Windows programming is the uh, way of doing programming. It's not programming paradigm, but it's a, a, a an approach of uh, doing programming for creating desktop application on Windows uh, in Windows operating system. The uh, key principle of this kind of programming normally you are using API and then let's say if you want to change uh, the title of a window in Windows programming normally you 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 want to first you 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 get the ID or window ID of the window and then you send uh, uh message whereby in this case you send message i want to change your your title and then use supply with parameter of string okay in windows programming uh it uh heavily use uh uh message passing okay you send message to particular window but uh, uh again uh, it follows imperative uh, style whereby in this uh, approach or in this programming style we focus on how to achieve things okay meaning that we 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 really really need to know the details of the steps okay, okay. Uh, like just now i mentioned regarding if i want to change the title of a window i need to go find the window and then get the uh, the id of the window and then once i get that and now i i have the reference and then after that once i get the reference and then i can uh, pass a string to the window okay so that the window will update its own uh, uh, title window window title okay uh, the next uh, the next technology uh, yeah i think this one you are really familiar uh web programming right here uh, i'm talking about native web programming okay uh, there is another kind of web programming whereby you are using framework okay. it, it, it is different story but yeah i'm talking about web programming the one that you learn from uh the web programming class whereby you are manipulating dom using javascript it is also an imperative uh, style so uh, later on on uh, in this lecture i'm going to show you uh, an example how our programming uh, is uh, is used okay and then uh, we we are going to see why actually uh, web programming is also a kind of imperative style and then uh, uh, for mobile development okay uh, android programming and also ios programming or by using objective c or uh, swift 
uh, they are also following imperative style okay so by writing code or by developing mobile application or using android programming you really really need to know so much because you need to know let's say if you want to change the title of this this particular uh, uh, let's call it component or widget you need to you need to know how to do it how to refer to the object and then how to change the title so um, so the same goes for ios programming okay so uh, regarding uh, imperative uh, programming uh, on you uh, user interface okay uh, in this uh, uh, style okay uh, it, it, it is the, the same uh, uh, because just i mentioned imperative state management basically comes the terms imperative comes from the the programming paradigm whereby this paradigm is focused on how so the same goes to if you want to manage user interface we we need to consider how to to do everything manually quote unquote manually meaning that uh, you need to know the details okay step by step of doing that things uh, this is possible for imperative uh, programming style or imperative step management uh, this is only possible because uh, normally for uh, technologies that are supporting uh, imperative or, adopt, or uh, uh, adopting imperative style uh, uh, the component of the, the things that we are dealing with normally are mutable meaning that you can change the the value okay uh, uh, for us that are coming from imperative world mm, it seems like mutable and immutability is not a big deal basically okay for us because we are exposed with mutability so when you learn uh, pt1 pt2 okay let's talk about variables you have the variables and then you are allowed to to set to get and to uh, to uh, to set the variable okay so uh, we we don't think mutability and immutability is a big a, a big a big deal in our our world but later on when we learn decorative style so the the, the term mutability and immutability is very important okay so in imperative ui like in windows programming in web programming and android programming how you can achieve uh state management because the components like let's say just know about the window uh they are basically mutable you you can uh, set the value uh, the the value of that uh, window title uh and over and over again okay you can and that's why how uh this is very important for imperative style because you are dealing everything on your own okay quote unquote manually or in other words explicitly okay you you have to you have to write the steps explicitly okay so uh, uh this is the common principle or common steps basically when dealing uh, imperative style uh step management or any yeah uh, any imperative uh, ui framework or technology the the key principle first you need to uh, when you want to do something want to change the ui you need to determine 
which UI component that needs update or needs to be deal with okay. like uh, an exa uh, the example I, I gave just now uh, changing the window title so I uh, I, I need to uh, okay I need to look at the which component needs update okay. depending on the technology uh, the way we, we, we do this is uh, 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 different from uh, one to another so for example in web programming the first step normally we are using get element by ID get element by uh, by class name and so on okay that, but it serves the same purpose to determine which component that you need to update once you get the component okay, it can be a button can be a text and so on then you start uh, invoking a, a mutation meaning that uh, you you send command or you uh, you you uh, write or you give command to the to the component so that the component uh, will change its states okay so uh, the normal way of doing this in most of the languages normally we we are doing with dot and then you 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 choose with property that you want to uh, change so uh, but it's different from for uh, windows programming because windows programming uh, is not object oriented programming it is a procedure, uh, procedure programming so the way you want to change everything you want to set is by sending message uh, in uh, ios programming or uh, android programming when you want to change uh, a property of particular component like a button you get the button and then you put dot and then followed by the property like the, the color and then you change the color of the button so that's how you do it for invoking mutation meaning that you we we, we we perform this because we want to change this uh, change the uh, the state and as well as the the ui of the the component or the ui element so okay uh, uh, let's take a look an example uh, imperative step management okay, here the first one we are going to look at a uh, web programming how imperative step management is used in web programming okay we are talking about native web programming so uh, an example this one uh, we have uh, hello world okay what we want to achieve here uh, when the user clicks on uh, either of these buttons uh, the color of this text hello world will change accordingly okay pressing button red will change to red for this hello world pressing button change color to blue uh, will change the hello world to blue so this is the the problem we are trying to achieve for this kind of application so the way you do it in the programming of course you provide you configure or you specify the page by HTML, by using html right and then uh, here if you notice here uh, this is the uh, we we display we display hello world by using a paragraph element okay but besides displaying the text we also provide this okay ID for the tag. Okay. Uh, 
and uh, as you uh, already learned from uh, web programming okay you use id for several reasons okay one is for uh, referencing from css or you can also use id to reference from javascript in this case we want to uh, reference uh, that one because yeah, we want to do this okay later on because here when we, we when we click on this button we we want to target this hello world so in this case we are using id uh, and then later on it's it, it easy for us to target or to reference by using get element by id okay so uh, this part is uh for the button okay, we have two here the first button which is uh for uh, changing red and then the second button for changing color okay as you notice here uh here we uh here we also provide a handler to the button by using the same function as a change text color and also for the other button change text color with blue okay and this function change text color is defined in a uh, script js Okay, I will be showing you this later. Okay, so as we learn from uh, the uh, the key tasks uh, to be done for imperative uh, UI management, the first we need to uh, uh, do all the update explicitly, manually. That means we need to do we focus on how to achieve that. Okay, so the first step is uh, accessing accessing the uh, hello world. Okay, here we are using the element by ID. We are using the element by ID and then just now we specify hello to P and then uh, then we get the not okay, as you already learned from web programming uh, when you run a page on a web browser the browser basically will render that page and then create uh, a structure a tree structure uh, called dom so each element in the uh, tree it is called not so here actually we are trying to to get or to retrieve the not that hold the hello world okay once once we 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 get the not okay here then we do the next step which is to mutate or to, to change the UI in this case in uh, web programming okay a DOM programming if you want to change the uh, the color of a text we actually need to change the CSS so in order to do that we use the property styles okay so as you can see here uh, in imperative normally uh, the way we access or we refer to to the state or to the comp ui 
uh, occurs in two direction okay just now we actually are reading from this one we re reading from the dom right okay here here this is not a mutation but this is a set a getter we just read from the dom we don't change anything yet here at this point at this point and then the second line the second line here is set or update or mutate the ui as you can see it happens into two directions okay we get and also we set Okay, next, uh, another example is in uh, .NET programming. Okay, .NET programming is is uh, uh, in this example. Uh, .NET programming actually we uh, we do programming on top of .NET framework. So you can use different kind of languages uh, that, that are supported in .NET. In this example, I was uh, writing a, a simple program which is serve the same purpose using a, a WinForm and then the language is C Sharp. Okay. So this is the same. Uh, the goal is the same. We want to uh, uh, allow the user to click on this button when the user clicks on change text it will change uh, when the user clicks on either one of these button the color for this hello world text uh, will change accordingly okay so this is also an imperative uh, step management example okay, so uh, uh for those you i think um if you are not familiar with uh, uh, uh net at least you have you you familiar with some other tools that follows the same uh principle normally you have design design uh, design mode and then you ha also have the code view so uh this is from android studio uh, no this is from visual studio uh so in design mode we can see here okay uh so we we have display okay the uh this is a list of this is a list of property uh, associated for actually this one currently we are talking about uh hello world okay the hello world text so uh, as you can see here it has name okay and then currently the name is uh, text display it, it is similar to id in web programming okay uh, the reason we have this actually the same we want to achieve the first step we want to determine which component that we are targeting okay and uh once we get the component in this case is text display and then we get the object and then we can play around with the the uh properties of the object in this case it comes from uh the font color okay so this is from the code whereby we we uh we bind callback for each button because only these two buttons need to perform something okay so the first one is change as, as you can see here we are actually first accessing the the uh text display which is the hello world text 
and then once we get the ob uh, the the object then we can set we can invoke mutation and specify the update we need in this case i want to update the color of the text to be bright color okay so the same goes to blue only the color need to be changed okay to blue okay so as you can see it uh, it uh, follows the same principle we retrieve the uh, the node or the component or the ui element that needs update okay which is get and then finally we mutate a particular properties that need, that need update so that one is set so it happens in two directions so uh so uh that was the uh, imperative step management now let's uh move on to declarative step management so just now for imperative our code beside focusing on uh what to achieve we also need to consider how to achieve that okay uh, uh, just now i showed you two uh, key tasks that you need to to do that you go find the object and then once you get the object and then you manipulate you do mutation on the object okay however in declarative state management uh, our code okay our our code I mean the code that written by by us by the programmer okay if you uh take a look at uh like in flutter your uh, lib slash min dot dot our code our user code focuses more on what okay what we are going to achieve rather than how to achieve that because the how part uh, will be handled by the framework here i'm i'm using a framework instead of uh, specifically mentioned uh, flutter because uh, not only flutter follow follows this uh, strategy or this approach some other framework also use the same uh, approach declarative so this kind of step management is widely used in a reactive ui frameworks okay such as uh, uh, react.js uh, vue.js and as well flutter itself okay. so uh, okay let's take a look how declarative step management uh, used in flutter so as i already mentioned flutter uses declarative approach whereby okay, it focus uh, it allow it allows the user code to focus on what what ui to to be achieved okay and then the framework will handle the uh the details on how to achieve that in general in that way okay uh just now we have seen in uh, uh imperative style uh it heavily used immut uh, mutable mutability concept okay uh, the reason why uh, imperative uh, can update uh, the ui okay it, it is because the component ui components are mutable uh, the framework allows the component to uh, to change however in uh, in flutter yeah, uh, the ui components or we call it widgets are all all are immutable okay uh, it's not uh, you, you we cannot change the properties of the 
uh, uh, UI or the widgets. Okay. So it seems like weird, right? Because if uh, if in Flutter the widget cannot change its appearance, like because it's immutable, the color, the text you cannot change. So how does Flutter make UI able to change? Okay. So the way Flutter handle this, it's by rebuilding, rebuilding new widgets. Okay. Uh, that means when uh, when uh, a widget needs to be updated, so what happened? Or you when a UI or a widget needs to be updated, what happened? Basically, Flutter will uh, create a new uh, a new uh, widget, okay, and then it will replace the existing one, okay. That's how. So that means the the term immutable here applies to the existing or the original the original widgets because we don't we don't change the original widget what we what we change is the new one and then when the new one arrives it will replace the original one okay so of course it's quite weird from uh, what we are uh, uh, familiar with why flutter follow this approach in fact it's not flat but mo uh, mostly uh, from reactive programming because uh, one of the reason the computation for replacing or rebuilding uh, they claim that is is much cheaper what unquote cheaper means from the uh, perspective of uh, times uh, is much cheaper than you uh, mutate the object okay so that's why uh, most of the uh, reactive framework are following this uh, strategy instead of uh, mut mutating the object or changing the existing uh, UI so in reactive framework normally the framework will create a new one and then scrap the old one and then replace with the new one okay okay that's all about uh, just now we are we are talk we talk about uh, very uh, high level uh, classification of uh, step management so uh, regarding approaches to manage or uh, we can we can say a approach or maybe a technique okay uh, to manage state in flutter there are actually there are uh, several uh, several uh, ways or several approaches to do so in order to manage state uh, uh, today the one that we are going to look at is a stateful widgets Okay, and then we also have inherited widgets, uh, a stream builder. Okay, so uh, these three actually are technique or approaches that come uh, out of the box when you install Flutter, meaning that you don't have to you don't have to uh, uh, to add on. Uh, external external package and then uh, a more advanced uh, uh, approach uh, like scope model and then provider and block and some other uh, I don't have to mention this uh, Redux, Mobex, uh, Rx, Hook and so on okay actually they are uh inspired by they are coming from basically from web 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 technology okay this kind uh, this this management this state management technology so uh as you notice here i highlight 
uh, these three uh, approach uh, this is actually my plan to uh, deliver in this course okay so uh, last time um, uh, if you can recall uh, i i mentioned that i only i'm, I'm only going to uh, to teach uh, a provider for advanced uh, uh, step management okay but at, uh, uh, i'm not going to i'm not going to uh, to deliver or to to uh to to include in the course for like block uh, scope or inherited widgets uh, uh hopefully i have time to focus on uh, uh this three only this three uh, approach okay okay uh up to this point we are talking about state management okay and uh, let's recall uh, state management is, is about how to synchronize your application data application state uh, to this uh, ui presentation right so basically it's all about how to uh you can say how to re re uh, uh, repainting the screen so because what you are currently seeing on the screen is basically what is currently what, what the the current state that that are storing or they are uh, uh held they are held by by your application right and then when the the state change uh, the way your application to tell to the user that changes is repainting the screen right uh, but of course that one that one is uh, from a very simplistic example uh, of course we, we in 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 platter is not uh, repainting it okay, oh, because there is another part of the of the architecture of Plato itself that does repainting or rasterization. So what Plato uh, does is basically just to rebuild the the widget. So the main idea of step management is actually how do widgets get rebuilt in order to we call it refresh the screen okay we, we need to refresh the screen when the state change right so how to refresh the screen the, the way we do it in flutter is basically by rebuilding the the widget tree okay so now the question how do we just get rebuilt okay so there are some cases or some situations uh, several situations that uh, max the widget a widget uh, to rebuild okay? get rebuilt uh, was when the parents get rebuilt so it's also rebuilt the children okay so for example like uh, when we uh, re rebuild the home page okay so so for example let's say you change the title or the home screen and then you press hot restart that one will uh, uh, trigger rebuilding that means we rebuild the home page this is the parent of text action button of course this floating action button basically but uh, I just simplify the wording here so when home page gets rebuilt so these three uh, child widgets uh, 
also get revoked. Okay. Second, the sec uh, second scenario is for stepful widget. Just now with uh, stepful widget. Okay, we are going to talk more on stepful widget later. Uh, for stepful widget, when a stepful widget gets notified, then or get signals like okay, some some other widget signal this stepful widget via this method set step that also will trigger uh, the widget to get rebuilt okay so an example here uh, later on we are going to see this okay uh home page is uh, a stepful widget and then plot action button here uh, signify, uh, uh, notify notify the home page uh, indirectly basically it's not direct because the uh, set state belongs to this state okay not uh, the widget itself so when floating action button blue uh, uh, notify uh, home page we are set state so that means the home page will also get rebuilt and again since it is a parent widget it will also rebuild the children okay uh the uh, a widget a widget can also get rebuilt for cases like stream builders when uh when the the widget okay uh receives streams so what what is a stream basically a stream is uh one uh, approach uh, an approach used in uh, in flutter to deal with uh, a stream of data okay. an example at the stream here I'm, I'm i'm showing you an example streams from the outside the stream the, the stream can also come from the application itself so here uh, an example uh, this this can be uh, like firebase right normally firebase communicate uh, with your application using stream so when uh, let's say you request something from firebase and then firebase will uh, give you the result and then it will send you uh, i mean your application a stream so and then in your application you have widget that get ready to receive that stream so the stream builder in this case stream builder will get triggered uh, when uh, it receives a stream okay and then at, at that moment it will uh, in, uh, invoke its uh, build method okay uh, okay uh, uh, next we are going to uh, we are going to uh, focus on uh, the first approach to to do state management which is by using stepful widgets okay so uh, before we move further on so let's take a look at some theory regarding this uh, approach okay so what is a stateful widget as you already saw this uh, diagram just now okay so basically uh, a stateful widget is just a regular widget okay as 
uh, we learn from the, the previous previous slide in flutter all widgets are immutable right so uh, by default okay uh, by default okay as you may already you already know there are two types of widgets in flutter the stateless and stateful so by uh, by default a widget is uh, stateless unless you specify it to be stateful so uh, what is a stateful widget a stateful widget is just a widget but it is associated with a state object it is associated with a state object this guy the whole thing here okay this is a stateful widget which consists of a uh, 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 a widget and then this widget is associated with a state so widget we have widget here is to, to for ui purposes to to display something on the screen whereby state is to store the current data or the update data for that particular uh, widget okay so uh, the widget itself is immutable uh, the way flutter max stateful widget stateful is because the the, the state itself is mutable that means it can change over time okay so the state object which is this guy is mutable okay that means uh, when we want to uh, change the appearance of the we want to change the UI of the application we because in this uh, structure only the states are mutable so you we, we change the state okay. we don't we cannot mutate the the widget okay again okay just now we have state we have state okay just now i mentioned here the state here is actually just like a, a, a storage to hold to hold the current state of that particular uh, part of, of the application in this case this is the home page okay. yeah, but even though the color here is not used by home page but we uh, later on we see uh, why we have this kind of uh, uh, de design why we put here okay so uh, uh, state here just now one of the purpose is as a storage to hold the current state because it can mutate we can update we can change the value uh, besides that uh state also serve for uh signaling the certain widget which is this uh, the, uh, the widget that 
is associated with to get rebuilt. Okay, why? Because this one. The state also has this very important uh, method which is set state and the purpose of this method is basically to uh, to signal uh, the widget so that it will get rebuilt okay. because we want to update the UI we need to refresh or we need to repair or in this case actually we need to rebuild the widget tree okay so by invoking this method okay causes the stateful widget gets rebuilt uh, and then of course when when we rebuild the parent so do the children okay now this is something something uh, uh the uh, the key difference between uh, imperative and declarative okay if uh, uh the in declarative uh, uh, programming like in flutter uh, normally it works by one direction you we we don't have uh, we cannot do something like let's say I want to change the text color okay, uh, after pressing this button so if we are working with imperative you can simply direct you can simply from the floating action button and then you update directly to this button okay. however in declarative declarative style we, we we don't do that okay we we don't change uh, 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 directly so the way in flutter uh, the way flutter does for the, for updating the ui is basically rebuild okay so let's say if we okay, let, let's let let's uh take this scenario uh i'm pressing a button floating action button so what happened actually i uh, behind the scene uh, our program will update the state okay and then also at the same time it also calls set state why to uh, rebuild this home page once home page gets rebuilt it also rebuilt the uh, all the children okay so for a text for text hello world here it's a special case because during the uh, re uh, rebuilding during the rebuilding so this widget will look at okay it uh, uh, look at the current value of the the uh, the state okay. here we are talking about state text color so uh, let's say uh, uh, okay after uh, this step this button will change the color to blue and then home page get rebuilt also will rebuild the uh, text 
so when this guy or when this text widget uh, rebuild it will look at this state okay So uh, during the rebuilding, since the uh, the state has changed after pressing uh, the flow action button here, so that means during the rebuilding for for text okay it will get the current or the recent or the new value of uh, text color so that that's how uh, uh, the UI of text hello world uh, gets updated Okay, uh, we reach uh, to this slide. Okay, so uh, basically this is the uh, this is the end of uh, the uh, uh, part one of this le lesson of this lecture, which is the theory about uh, a stateful. Okay, so the, the, the next step we are going to uh, we are going to uh, uh, to uh, I'm going to show you a demo okay uh, uh, how to use a, a stateful widget for basic state management okay. Okay, uh, but before we do that, uh, uh, I think it's better for me to uh, to to give you a summary regarding what we have learned uh, from the uh, the first part. Okay, in in the first part, we have. Uh, learn about uh, what is what a uh, uh, stat is all about okay it's about uh, data data that is currently uh, held by the when the program is running and then uh, we also have seen uh, stat management what is it and why we need step management uh, the key point here step management is there is because we want to synchronize the application data application state and the ui okay we want the application state or application data and ui in sync we also have seen uh, uh two major uh categories uh, of managing uh state okay imperative and declarative okay uh for imperative uh besides we need to know what to achieve in imperative approach we also need to to know how to achieve that Okay. 
However, in declarative, uh, our code we focus more on in our code we focus more on only what that's why we we call it uh, we just configure we 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 want we configure the UI. Okay, we do configuration on the UI and the how how the ui is achieved it is the job for the framework to do to do it okay. and also we have seen several approach to manage a state okay like stateful widgets by using stateful widgets and we have streams uh stream builder we have provider uh and and so on and uh lastly we we have seen uh, how uh we can use uh, stateful widgets to to do basic state management okay the key uh player for stateful widget is basically this uh, uh method set state okay whereby uh, set state is a method uh, to signal uh, uh, the corresponding or the respective widget to get rebuilt okay so uh, the uh, the I think the first part of this lesson has almost uh, been done okay i think uh after this we are going to jump in into demo but uh before i end this uh first part uh i i i want you to sign in your attendance on e-learning uh and then i will give you the uh the the keyword okay to so that you can uh, punch in in on e learning uh, the keyword is multiple choice okay multiple choice this is the attendance for today you uh, you you type this on e-learning okay i think that's all for the first part of this uh, session uh, the next video will be about the demo on uh, using a stateful uh, widget for basic state management okay